Ya. Yeah. Okay, Roy, here we are then. Uh, a couple of 73-year-olds. I think we're both extremely fortunate doing something that we all love. Yeah, that's very well put, Jim, I think. I couldn't add anything to that, um, other than the fact that I don't often think of myself as being 73 years old. That's the only thing I would add to that. If we can wind the clock back and wind the clock back to you as a 28-year-old going to Sweden and going to Halmstad, and a man called Bobby Houghton. We were pretty inseparable and we both were fortunate enough to get our badges. Bob managed to get himself a job in in Sweden with Malmo, where he had two very successful years in 1974 and 75. So when a team called Harmstead Ball Club were looking for a coach to start work in 1976, uh, I was his suggestion and uh, they, they took it up. They avoided relegation on goal difference before I came, the year before I came. And it was the second year back after a long absence. So to then get five years and win two championships was very rewarding for the club, and they've built on that since. For the only, for the three, yeah. Maybe one is 46. We we took 38 points. I think it's so important that you do have some sort of grasp of the language, and it proves to the people that you want to be there. I think it proves that you're not there on loan, if you like, from another country. You're there because this is where you want to do your work. The sort of fanatics, if you'd like to call them that, you know, the ones that really follow the club through thick and thin, they've dedicated a corner to me. I think they've also dedicated one to Bob, so we have each of us uh, a corner in the stadium, the old stadium where we were uh, so successful, both of us. I'd like to talk to you about a much bigger club, about Inter Milan, and I've got a quote here from from the president, Massimo Moratti, who said, Roy Hodgson saved us at the right time. He's recognized as an all important person in our history. Well, that's a very nice quote. I've not, not actually heard that one. It was probably the, the biggest step I think I've probably taken in many ways, because going to Inter, which was a club which everyone expected to win at all times and at all costs, with a team that perhaps wasn't quite up to that at the time, that was a, a massive challenge. The Italian media was very different to the sort of media I'd been used to dealing with in Sweden, where I seemed to be everybody's friend and no one had a, an unkind word for me. It suddenly that changed overnight. Cameras made the run. He's in behind. It's a huge chance for Fulham. He scored. What a wonderful Fulham comeback. And here at Fratton Park, we concentrate on Fulham's incredible fight for survival. If ever there was a day where we didn't panic, that was it. We, we knew we had to win. One goal for Fulham turns it all around, and there it is! Danny Murphy! We knew Bullard could deliver the cross, but we didn't know that, that uh, Danny Murphy could get amongst people and head it into the back of the net, which he did that day. He never ceases to remind me about it. I think it was a wonderful campaign that the, the lads did. To lose it actually in extra time was, was tough, I thought, on everybody, but uh, it was a wonderful time, and I think Fulham will, that success, if you like, will live long in the memory of all Fulham fans and the club itself. The opening of a new era as these Liverpool players gather in the tunnel. You know, I went there after this huge success with, with Fulham, and as a result, it was probably difficult for me to summon up that degree of humility and perspective and wisdom to say, right, if I'm going to approach this job, it's going to be a long-term one. I went there at a difficult time. I went there when the ownership was changing. I went there after a manager who'd been there a long time and a very popular one had been required to leave and the one that all Liverpoolians wanted didn't get the job. So in actual fact, uh, if ever you want to build a mountain to climb before you start, I think I built that mountain. England came calling, not for the first time, and you accepted. You have a good spell as England manager in terms of qualifying and winning matches along the way, but unfortunately the, the crunch is always going to be when you get to the final, there's going to be games in the finals which will define whether you, you go on or go out, and uh, I, I didn't win those defining games.
bad defeats and, and, and bad moments, they, they hurt you more. When you're younger, you're always thinking, well, I'm, I'm young, I'll get over this one and I'll go on to great things. How much does it mean to you to be back at, at the Palace, back at this particular club? Yeah, I was very pleased when I got the opportunity to come, to come back here. It's, uh, it's a good club, there's no question of that. We have a, a very good group of players and it's been very enjoyable working with this group because you know we, we all know exactly where we are and where we stand and what we've got to do to achieve our view of success. Who knows, in this job, to be fair, is more common, I think, for us as managers and coaches to be told we don't want you anymore rather than us going to them and saying, right, you'd love me to stay, but I don't want to. We both love the gig. That's, that's the trouble, Roy, isn't it? We both love what we do. Yeah, that's true, Jim, we do. And it's been a really, really good life. We've been given a chance to work at something that we love doing, and that's not given to everybody. I think we're exceptionally fortunate. We must remind ourselves of it too.